We're down to the uh, Long Jean Singapore Gold Cup for 2015. What a crackerjack race it is. And the Triple Crown is on the line here for a step it up. And has drawn in gate number one, so gets a perfect opportunity to uh, become the first horse to, uh, to win the Triple Crown. Keshwar is uh, horse number two in Fastnet Dragon. For mine, I think the, the winner might come in the, the top three, but uh, we'll discuss that more. Hughes, he was very good at his last start. Plenty of uh, plenty of really good form in this. Let's flip over the page, have a look at Martin, who's uh, probably one of the real roughies in this. Perfect P going well. Uh, down to uh, Seabros and Trapeus, the winner two years ago, makes up for the field of uh, 16. Well, Laurie Lakeson, uh, as always, has a pretty good hand in these uh, feature races. He's chasing the triple crown with Step It Up. Laurie, you must be pretty happy with the way the barrier draw has gone for your horses. Yeah, it's worked out good. You're going to get a um, um, nice economical run for um, for the top weight. And uh, um, Valbuena's drawn two. You get a nice run. Martin doesn't matter so, so much because he gets back in the field anyway, so uh, he's drawn wide. So uh, those are the three that are going to run. It seems key, doesn't it, to draw gate number one. We've seen in recent years uh, your horse better than ever. We saw War Affair last year drawing wide as they try to complete the Triple Crown. Uh, not easy with the heavy weight, but gate number one gives him a gives him a chance, doesn't it? Well, he's probably the best horse in the race, isn't he? Um, like after all, he's won the UT Classic, um, Queen Elizabeth, and Cranji Mile and Raffles Cup. You know that's uh, pretty impressive, and. Um, I can't see why he couldn't add this race to his list too. I think the barrier gives him a chance. Um, the, the reason, probably amongst a few things better than ever, more of here couldn't complete the Triple Crown, was the uh, the barrier on the Wednesday or the Thursday. Yep, and he's done it. Gate number one, so that's probably... He ticked the first box there and it gives him a fleeting hope, I think. Well, better than a fleeting hope, he's got a very good chance. Well, the horse that drew uh, gate number one in the, the derby and ran a, a blind, it was fast near Dragon, and again he's drawn fairly well for trainer Leslie Coo. Leslie, you'd be happy with the barrier draw there for Fastnet Dragon? Yeah, I'm very happy with the uh, barrier. Well, this is the big, uh, potentially the big payday. His preparation has been pretty good leading up to this race. Yeah, in fact, I'm preparing very well for this, this especially for this big race. Yeah. You didn't uh, miss in the derby vibe very much when Keshwa beat you at level weights. I mean, it's going to be very significant, isn't it, that you're potentially going to get three and a half, four kilos from him? Yeah, I think my chances on this, this is the best time I, my chances is this. So the first time I finished third, second and hopefully this will be the first one. And the 2200 metres, do um, you think Farsa Dragon, that's what he's looking for? I think he should be able to take the distance. And you've got the right man in the saddle of course, uh, Alan Munro knows how to win these sort of races? Yeah, he's been, been winning races all the time on this horse, so he's used to the horse. And what about fitness wise, you just brought him along slowly, you got him 100% for the big day? Yeah, definitely 100% for the big day, yeah, 100%. He's doing very well, uh, yes, he have a good gallop and Alan is very happy to gallop and I'm happy too and put our finger crossed for the big deal. Well, Fastnet Dragon's going to meet uh, Step It Up 8 kilos better, but probably more realistically 6.5 kilos better, uh, Gareth. Is that enough to turn the tables from the Raffles Cup? On paper, yes, uh, and it's got to count for something, Craig, but it's the big day. Whoever gets the most luck in running, etc., uh, etc. Et we want the fairy tale and the dream to continue. Uh, it should count for something, you think? Yes, you would imagine so. Now, Blue Danube is the, the horse trained by Michael Clemens. Came here with a very big reputation. Hasn't been smooth sailing. Let's hear what uh, Michael thinks of his chances. Michael uh, Blue Danube, if he did what he did two starts ago when he beat some fancied rivals in the Gold Cup, he'd be a big chance in this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he was pretty impressive the day he won. And um, he's, uh, he's a horse that's been... Uh, uh, taking time to acclimatise since he's been here. Um, he's been training on and getting better and better as months have gone by and um, I'm really happy that he's, I feel I've got him better now than, uh, than when he did win that race. So uh, he's looking good going into this race. Since then you dropped him back to 1600 metres and again he ran very well but is the 22 exactly what he's looking for do you think? Well there's no doubt he's competitive over 2000 metres. Uh, very confident that he'll get that. Um, he hasn't been tested over further than that, than that up to now, uh, but the, the way he's won his 2,000 metre races, I, I, I feel it should, the extra 200 metres should be no problem for him. You happy with uh, De Silva in the saddle? Yes, very much so. Um, he's, uh, he's always ridden at a minimum of 53 kgs. In Brazil, uh, that is the lightest weight. They never really have to come down below that. 
but um, naturally he can get down to this weight of uh, around about 51 kgs and obviously for his future here going forward in Singapore it will be good for him to be able to ride, ride light weights. Um, I did give him uh, ample notice about riding this horse at 51 and a half. Uh, so he's had about uh, four to five weeks to bring his weight down and um, he seems pretty confident that it should be no problem for him. You happy with the barrier draw, middle of the line? Yeah, I, I feel that um, he's well, not entirely happy with the barrier draw. He, he appears to have been a better horse uh, when he gets to the rail. Um, certainly when he won his race over 2,000 metres here, um, he, he had the rail and uh, he just seems more comfortable there and, and, and in his training as well, he, he just, for whatever reason, likes to be on the rail. So not an ideal barrier draw. So with that in mind, uh, tactically, would you think about rolling him forward? I'd, I'd say we'd have to. Um, I'd, I'd say there's going to be a genuine speed and pace on. And um, yeah, with that in mind, we'd be looking certainly not to have him too far back and, and, uh, and with the risk of running him too far wide. So uh, he's, he's been a very versatile horse in his races in, in Argentina. Um, he's been able to be up uh, on the pace and he's been able to be back as well. So yeah, we'd certainly have to consider running him a bit closer up to the speed this time. Okay, so there's Michael Clements with the Blue Danube. Well, with the sort of rumoured price that was paid for that horse, this is the race they would have been targeting. Yeah, and just one important point, if it rains, just having a look at his uh, wet track record from Argentina, he's had six runs on rain-affected tracks for five wins. So, obviously, his record on all tracks has been very good, but um, he'd be one that certainly would appreciate a bit of rain. Yeah, good point. Now, we're going to chat with uh, Pat Shaw in just a moment. Let's have a look at uh, Cash Warrior's big gun first up here in a little bit of uh, track work, Gareth. Moving well. Emperor's Banquet, um, he was second in this race last year to Keshra. Uh, obviously, Keshra Craig, he's, he's an iron horse of the yard. He's game, he's consistent. Matt, uh, what was that stat you, uh, you had for us? He, he hasn't been out of the first three in... Uh, in his whole career, even before he came here, he's been out of the first three only once, Keshwa, so he doesn't run a bad race. Order of the Sun, likely leader from a wide gate. Yeah, interesting in his track work that he was sitting uh, off the pace here. Oh, I wonder what they're going to do, but his best races go from the front. But yep. I think Absolutely. Corey will be banking on the fact that, or hoping, that this horse goes to the front and can give him a nice toe yep. and a nice lead into uh, a good handy position. I think it's almost impossible for him not to, uh, to lead. Yeah. Order the sun, he has to go forward. Yeah. has to go forward. He's, uh, his form's been pretty good, actually. He's been fighting on really strongly, so he's going along uh, well. Pat Shaw, once again, has plenty of runners in the, uh, the feature race. Let's hear from him after the barrier draw on Wednesday morning. At the reaction to Keshwa, pretty wide uh, gate for him. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, last year he did the same thing. We drew wide, we were all a bit worried. Uh, but funny enough, uh, Corey wasn't too too perturbed. He said there is a bit of speed um, on, on, on his inside, so he'll just follow them through. And we know there is going to be speed. Uh, there's a few horses there with pace. Uh, actually, there's one of mine in gate four that's going to be up there. So I'll, I'll make it there, make sure there's a place. Some things have gone against you at the barrier draw, but things that have gone well for you, uh, given that the horses won a gold cup in a derby to have 55 kilos is a fantastic weight and makes it possible to go back to back. Yes, you know, um, with a horse like um, Step It Up in the race, which is uh, a phenomenal horse, um, don't write him off. He's, he's one of those horses, uh, even with a 58, I, 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 really, I really think he's a, a top horse, and I've seen horses win with 58. Um, but on the weights at the moment, uh, I'm, I'm very worried about a horse like uh, Fast Red Dragon, who at the weight uh, with Quetcher, uh, if you go on the, da in the, on the derby, he beat, I beat him a length, or maybe three quarters a length at level weights, and now I've got to still give him five. Quite a difficult position. What about Perfect P, a terrific horse since he's arrived, terrific horse before he got here. He's done nothing wrong, has he? Yeah, he's had two from two in Argentina. Obviously, they, they weren't features or anything. But whatever he's done, yeah, he's only improved. Every time we've stepped him out, he's gone he's gone the distance and he's uh, he one better and better and better. So, obviously, this class, we'll, we'll, we'll see the true ability. And uh, as far as staying, I'm not worried about the staying ability. He's got it. OK, so there's uh, Patrick Shaw, Keshwa. I think he's the, the best of them. You're a bit of a perfect P fan going into this? The unknown quantity who's done a fantastic job in his build-up to this race, who's sort of been ignored and overshadowed by his superstar stablemate, Craig, and I've included Perfect P, and I think if Keshwa doesn't keep up that fantastic record, he's the type of horse who could be there to back him up, and 
I think he's everything's gone right for him. He's a lovely horse, perfect P. Just very quickly on uh, Keshwa, Matt, he's, he's that sort of horse, and you, you read out the stat, he's just a machine. He'll just... It's, it's just almost impossible to think of him not running a good race. Yes, and I think uh, the thing that he'll appreciate, and Pat spoke about Fastnet Dragon being the danger, but you'd have to say that you would think Keshwa will run it out better than Fastnet Dragon. I think the 2200 metres plays into the hands of Keshwa and Order the Sun, horses that have proven over a bit further, so he'll uh, he'll lap up every every centimetre of the trip. The horse who won the Eldorado Classic was uh, Seabrose. He's trained by Mark Walker. Mark's assistant trainer, Gus Clutterbuck, had a chat at the, the barrier draw. Been happy with his um, his El Dorado win, getting a long way back, but cut a few corners. Maybe he'll try and do the same in the uh, in the Gold Cup. Yeah, he'll have to do the same same sort of thing. If he's got three or four, four behind him, going out of the straight and it's truly run, he'll definitely be there at the finish. Looking for a bit of rain potentially. I mean, Mark's always said that he he's, he looks like a horse who'd appreciate a soft track. Yeah, he's one of those horses. There's not not very many of them, but he can sprint off a soft track. So that. That uh, would be very valuable if it did happen. The rain on the day. Step it up, drawing one. You know he's got it all favours now. And um, Quetcha with fifty-five. That with the two hardest of beat. Yeah, well, he, he's got to be a chance. He's a lovely horse. Manuel Nunes has picked up the the ride on him. And the Gold Cup down through the years has been a race, you know, seen El Dorado, it's risky business and, you know, even Cheat on Fire, Emperor's Banquet in recent years that have placed, uh, Meraki Caraca. You don't have to be an absolute world beater to finish in the first few. I think Seabro's form's excellent coming into this race and I wouldn't discount him. He'll need luck in running, but he's, he's drawn a decent gate. So the recoveries there are the, the chances. I'm going to go with the fast net dragon. I think the, the weight pool's significant here. Seabro's for second, step it up and Keshwa. It's a great cup. I'm going to go Keshwa to go back to back. Um, to beat Step It Up, Fastnet Dragon and Order of the Sun. Keshwa, Step It Up, Fastnet Dragon and I've got a lot of time for Perfect P but it's a thrilling race.